sometimes within our churches and, and within Christianity in general, there can be a bit of a difficulty or, or some misconceptions about how we should deal with different topical or cultural events, particularly things like the, the protests that we've seen over the past few days and weeks in the USA and into the UK as well, following the death of George Floyd. Often there can be a, a feeling that we shouldn't react with anger and when we see protests we're not sure if that's the right way to, to go about things because there's that feeling that we should be merciful and gracious and kind and looking to respond in the right way and that it's really important that we don't speak out of anger. But you know, I'm not always convinced that that's the right approach to take. Recently, I've been reading through some of the Minor Prophets again, particularly looking at Amos. As we read through Amos, there's messages of, of the coming judgment of God, that God is going to punish those who stand against justice, who use their position to trample on the poor, on the weak, on the oppressed to create suffering through injustice. And then of course we come on to that famous line quoted by Martin Luther King, let justice roll on like a river and righteousness, like a never failing stream. It seems that God gets pretty angry when there is injustice within the world. But then of course we don't live under the old covenant anymore. We look to Jesus and there's that almost cliched statement when we're trying to think of what to do in situations of what would Jesus do? Well, there's a story in the Gospels where Jesus comes up against situations of oppression and injustice. He comes to the temple, to that place where people were supposed to be honouring God. But he sees that the people there are using their position to trample on the poor. There's injustice within the temple. People are trying to make money rather than using it as an opportunity to serve one another and to create equality and prayer. And Jesus responds in a way that seems quite angry. He turns over the tables of the money lenders. He causes chaos in the temple courts. He grabs a rope and makes a whip and begins to drive people and animals out of the temple area, saying that it was supposed to be a house of prayer, but they have turned it into this den of thieves. When it comes to injustice and inequality, it seems like Jesus says that actually there are times where it's okay. Maybe the righteous thing to do is to be angry. It sort of makes me wonder, what would Jesus say if he was to look at our world today? You know, I think when Jesus looks at our world today and sees the injustice that, that's still happening, you know, we're 200 years plus on from William Wilberforce, and the abolition of the slave trade over 50 years on from Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement and yet still people are suffering discrimination and injustice. People are being murdered simply because of the colour of their skin. I think that would make God pretty angry when he looks at our world today. You know, I think for us, if we look around us at the world today and it doesn't make us angry in some way, then to be honest, I don't think we're really paying attention to what's going on. Because the God that I see through the Bible seems to stand against injustice in all of its forms. So when we ask that question, what would Jesus do or say? And what would he have us as his followers do or say? I think one thing that we can say is that Jesus would stand in solidarity with those who are oppressed within our world. Perhaps that's what we as his followers need to do today.